What's up everybody, this is Kerry. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Ken Palm stats to predict the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. Now, I've heard a lot of people say this, like, you know, the top 20 in offense, top 30 in defense, or maybe top 20 in both, whatever, but never anything really definitive. I did see one YouTube video where someone said, well, uh, here's the rankings, and that's great, but what I like to see is the actual numbers, the numbers for each of these different stats we're gonna show you here in just a second. So here's the actual Ken Palm stats for March 12th, 2024. You can see down here at the bottom, some of the stats we're talking about, Houston and Connecticut are the top two teams. That's based on the adjusted efficiency margin, A-D-J-E-M, uh, which is in the third column there. And let me go ahead and highlight those stats we're gonna use. Now what these are, A-D-J-O is the adjusted offensive efficiency and the higher that number is, the better the offense. So the number one offense here in the country is Purdue at 126.5. That's a very high rating. And the adjusted defensive efficiency is the lower the number, the better. So 88.2, Connecticut has a number one defense in the nation, according to this metric. And you can see here that these teams have various rankings here in terms of their defense efficiency. Um, again, I'm not going to use the rankings. I'm going to use the actual numbers here. Because, you know, the, the difference between one and two and then two and three might be very different. So uh, let's go ahead and just stick with the numbers. Now, these rankings are based on the adjusted efficiency margin. That is simply the adjusted offense minus the adjusted defense. So it's an easy subtraction here. But we're going to use all three of these stats anyways when I show you the data here from 2001 to 2023. And what we're going to use to make predictions on the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. Okay, so here we go. There's a lot of dots here. <laughs> I realize that. Each one of these dots represents a team that was in round one, the first round of the NCAA tournament from 2001 to 2023. Now, if we look at the bottom here, this is the adjusted defensive efficiency. And this goes from 80 to 120. So that's the full range of values in these 22 seasons. On the vertical axis, we have the adjusted offensive efficiency, and that goes from 90 to 130. So what each of these dots represents is a single team in the NCAA tournament in round one. And the blue dots are teams that won in round one, and the orange dots are teams that lost in round one. So you can see some, an obvious pattern here. The higher the offensive metric is, the more likely you're going to win. The lower the defensive metric as well. And because the higher number in defense represents a worse defense, the defenses that are, are not good are here to the far right. Now, I realize we have a outlier way out here. And if you really want to put a dot to a name here, this is Farley Dickinson in 2023. They had, according to the Ken Palm stats, the worst adjusted defensive metric here uh, since 2001. But yet they won this round one game against Purdue, they, was, they were a 16 seed and they upset a number one seed. So anyways, what we're going to do is we're simply going to look at these dots here and see if we can't find any patterns. Like I just mentioned, the higher the adjusted offensive stat, the more likely they're going to win. So what we do is we find boundaries here, what are called decision boundaries, and see if, it, if a dot or if a number is, if a team is above that boundary, they might win. So here it is, 120.7. If you have a team in the tournament in round one and their adjusted offensive metric is above 120.7, then 90% of those teams win in round one. Now, similarly, if we look at the bottom here, of course, the worst offenses are at the bottom and we got a 105.2. Again, it worked from the middle down and below the 105.2, 90% of those teams lost in round one. And then the defense. So this is a vertical line, 102.6, way up here. If we go to the right of this, again, the higher that number is, the worse the defense. So any team that has, a, has an adjusted defensive efficiency greater than 102.6 is likely to lose. In fact, 90% of those teams will lose. So that gives us three boundary values that we're going to use to make decisions on who wins and who loses in round one. Now, before I did those vertical and horizontal lines, you looked at this chart, you might notice one thing here, which seems pretty obvious. The better the offense and the better the defense, those teams are in the upper northwest corner here. The worst offenses with the worst defenses are in the southeast corner. Again, I moved my way from the inside out, 
And I got it to the point here where 90% of these teams above this blue line are winners in round one. And similar down here, this orange line, 90% of the teams that are below this orange line are losers in round one. So that gives us two more decision boundaries where we can pick winners and losers in round one. So that first horizontal line at 120.7, if a team, you look at the brackets, they come out on Sunday, selection Sunday, if a team in the first round has an adjusted offensive efficiency above 120.7, then they win at 88%. So that's one of the decisions we'll make right here. We'll pick the team with those numbers above 120.7. This is the adjusted efficiency margin, which is that very first slanted line. And that was, again, Y-intercept here at 22.9, which basically means that any team that has this value greater than 22.9 in the first round will win at a 90% clip. Now, they're not all gonna be winners. Some of these are losers. So if we look at the adjusted offensive metric again, any team below 105.2, 90% of those teams lose. And this is a, that vertical line here, the adjusted defensive metric. Any team that has a adjusted defensive efficiency above 102.6, 90% of those teams lose. Now, finally, this is that lower slanted line here, a team has an adjusted efficiency margin less than 10, then 90% of those teams lose in round one. So these five metrics here, these five numbers, pick winners and losers in round one at a 90% rate, which I think is pretty awesome. So we did a similar thing for round two, and rather than going through the full explanation here, I'll just show you the lines. Of course, some of these will be higher because the teams are more evenly matched. Teams have to be above 122.6 to be a winner here. And because this is the second round, you have closer matchups here. Uh, we don't get to 90%, we get to 80%, which is still pretty good. Uh, but what I'm gonna show you here is that same chart I showed you earlier. So when you get to the second round, if a team has adjusted offensive efficiency above 122.6, then 80% of those will win. Adjusted efficiency margin above 25.1, which is very good, those teams will win at 80%. Adjusted offensive metric below 105.2 will lose at 78%. Adjusted defense above 103.6 will lose at 80%. And the adjusted efficiency margin below 13.5 in the second round will lose at 81%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the brackets on Sunday night and see which teams I think might win, which ones might lose. But I'm going to wait till Monday when the Ken Palm stats are get updated. So I'm going to use those numbers to pick my winners and losers for round one and round two. I'm also going to use the same stats to predict the final four, and in fact, to predict the champion. I like the ESPN challenge, which is where I'm gonna enter my picks. You get 25 brackets there. So what I'm gonna show you on my next video is how to pick the contenders, the top seven or eight teams that are more than likely gonna win the championship. I'm so happy that March Madness is here. It's a really exciting time of the year, and I'm really looking forward to dominating some of these bracket pools. I hope you are too. Have a good one.